All toy restorations will be handled by the YouTubers controlling each gem. Reproduction parts may not be used where there are Star Wars forms. Toy restorers and collectors are available. Toy Poloi has been assigned. Welcome to Toy Poloi. No Legos were harmed in the making of this video. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at repairing broken T-bars on these vintage LJN Advanced Dungeons and Dragons figures. Now, I've previously shown you a video on how to reattach the legs if they have fallen off, basically because the O-ring has perished. But quite often with these vintage LJN figures, it's not just the band that breaks, it's actually the T-bar that holds the legs on these first wave figures that tends to break. In fact, it happens so often, I have a bag of uh, figures with broken legs here. Now I have, as I say, previously shown you how to reattach the legs. In fact, this war duke here is the one that I uh, fixed up. So this guy's had his legs reattached when the T-bar that goes between legs wasn't broken, just the elastic has perished. And also on this one, his head had detached. So I went to a whole uh, set of uh, repairs on him. But a lot of people I know will have said, oh, do you fix that? But uh, the main issue is not that, it's the fact that the T-bar that holds the legs uh, breaks. So that is what we are going to cover today. Let's take a look at some uh, broken t-bars and we'll see what we can do to fix it. So what do I mean when I say broken t-bars? Well if you collect G.I. Joe figures you'll know exactly what I mean. The legs of those figures are held together by a small piece of metal which looks like this. In fact this is a whole bag of replacement t-bars that you can buy for G.I. Joe figures. That is what a t-bar looks like. It's a piece of metal with a ball at either end of a pole and then a hook in the middle. What happens is the leg is attached to this ball piece at either end so you've got a nice sort of bit of motion and then this hook is hooked onto an o-ring which is then held up inside the body gives a bit of a sort of springy action and holds the legs in place. Now on these figures you can see that that's exactly the same process. You can see there's the T-bar in there and then there's an O-ring that goes up and hooks over the inside of the body and gives it that motion. This is only the case with the sort of first release of these figures, the ones that don't have the battlematic action. So you can see here this is a first issue War Duke. His legs are held on like that and here we have a second issue Strongheart. Now his legs have been changed. You can see this just pivots forwards and backwards and there is no uh, T-bar involved. That's because this has the new battlematic action part that makes the arm move. So this issue only affects the first sort of release of these figures. And the problem is with these figures, unlike G.I. Joe's, G.I. Joe's are held together with screws. So there will be a screw inside the leg. You won't screw that take it apart and you can change the T-bar. With these, the legs are glued together. So we have to work out a way of splitting those legs. Not only are the legs screwed together, but also the figures are different sizes. So the T-bars are different sizes depending on what figure you are fixing. So here we have a selection of broken T-bars. Now taking these from the most common two sizes of the line, we have the smaller figures here. This is uh, uh, Ringle Run. He's the same size as things like War Duke and Strongheart and Kelleck. And then we have this larger figure here, which is the uh, Young Male Titan. And the T-bar in this one is the same as the one used in North Lord and also the Ogre King. Now here we have the bars. So you can see that is the larger bar. And what tends to happen is the posts snap off the end. I also have one of these smaller bars here so this is the one from uh, Ringle Run and you can see again that, that that end has snapped off and that one though that is the one that is pretty much the same size as a GI Joe T-bar so we can use the GI Joe T-bars to swap out on those on this bigger one we have a bit of a problem because there are no replacement T-bars that, that are that size but I do have something that will work so um, first thing I think we should do is let's replace the T-bar on one of these smaller sort of medium sized figures now I'm not going to lie and say this is an easy thing to do. It's not. It's fraught with all sorts of dangers because you've got to basically split some uh, sort of 13 or almost 40 year old plastic apart and this has been glued particularly well. These would be much easier to fix if they were like G.I. Joe's and just had a screw in them but they aren't so uh, you just have to sort of work around it and as you can see some of the sort of piles of pieces that I have around I've been working on this for a while trying to uh, come up with a fix and it's taken me all this time to come up with something I'm pretty happy with. It's not perfect but uh, it does do the job. So, uh, you know, it might be that there are better ways of doing this. I'm sure other people will have comments and uh, please do leave them in the description. But for now, I think this is the best way of uh, going about it. 
So I have here, this is a bag of tea bars. You can buy these on eBay. I've got loads of them because I'm constantly fixing GIJs and other things of this scale. So uh, just buy these, they're very cheap. And you end up with a whole bag of little tea bars like this. These are not an exact match. The tea bars that are on these figures actually have bigger sort of balls at the end of each of these poles, uh, but these will work just as well. So um, it doesn't matter that they're not quite as big. In fact, having these smaller balls at the end actually makes this easier to fix because you've got to push these back into these small little holes here. So what we're going to do first is get out the uh, broken T-bar. So you can see in there the uh, where it's snapped, we've got the end of the T-bar stuck in there. And also if we look inside this one, this is a particularly rough uh, um, ring or run, it doesn't matter. We're just going to sort of work on it. You can see there is the old T-bar there. So we need to get that out. And to do that, we've got to uh, break this uh, old O-ring. So again, I've just got a knife. I'm going to cut that O-ring and we can take that out quite easily. And then uh, once this is all fixed, we can re-thread it. I've shown you how to do that on the uh, Warduke figure in the previous video. So uh, let's just cut this old O-ring and get this bar out. So there we go, that is the legs off and you can now clearly see the broken T-bar. So we have to remove that from the ends of both of these legs. And this is where the risk comes in because we have to slightly split this plastic apart. On these figures, especially on these Ringle Runs and Kellex, the plastic's actually got a bit of a gap to it. So all you've got to do is get a knife gently in the end there and give it a bit of a twist. And sometimes these, the plastic just starts to come apart. You can hear it sort of creaking a bit. Um, and it seems that the, on these ones particularly, this is enough to sort of push the plastic apart and um, yeah, you can then get the ball out. Uh, I've tried this also on the larger figures like um, Young Male Titan and that. It's not quite so easy, but on these ones, it really does seem to work quite nicely. So you can see it's starting to twist apart. You've basically just got to break the, uh, the glue. Sometimes it splits down the plastic. You can see on that one, it's just split a little bit down the plastic. But you can sort of get away with that, especially on this one, because he has a cape on in the end, which hides all of this. So you can see now I've managed to split that apart just enough that I can get my knife under there and hopefully again with a little bit of wiggling and maybe a screwdriver I can pull the uh, old bit of the T-bar out. But you can see that the uh, ball on the end of this T-bar is absolutely massive and that's why this is uh, quite an awkward job. But I'll keep persevering and I have done this a few times so I know it can be removed. There we go, that fired across the room. I don't know where it went, but we've now removed that old piece of T-bar. In fact, I just found it, it did ping around my room. So there you go, that's the bit of T-bar. So you can see that the size of the metal ball there, and we can just compare that to this new T-bar, which is the uh, G.I. Joe one. You can see how much smaller that is. But now we've got that out, we can actually just pop this one in. And because the plastic is sort of a bit open already, all you need to do, get your knife in there again, twist it a bit, and you can drop that back in place like so. And you can see that fits in quite nicely. It's a bit loose, but it's not too bad. And where this plastic has split apart a little bit, all you're gonna need is some uh, plastic weld because uh, this plastic works particularly well with plastic weld. So we'll do that in a bit once we've got the other leg done. But you can see that now has a new T-bar in it. So let's get the other leg done. On these other legs, it's exactly the same process. You can see that the plastic is starting to split anyway. So all we've got to do is get the knife in there, give it a little bit of a twist, and hopefully that will start to uh, split apart and we can take the rest of the T-bar out. It's a bit vicious, as I say. I'm still hoping that there'll be a better way of doing this at some point, but for now, this seems to be the best way of doing it. And um, hopefully, yeah, someone in future may come up with a better solution, but I think this does work okay. So there you go, that's split a little bit. And once you've got the knife in, that's, that's the bit that uh, makes it sort of seem possible, because once the knife is in, you can then start manhandling this T-bar and get it out of the top of the leg. Sometimes I find a screwdriver a little bit better. I'm always worried that I'm going to cut myself quite nastily with the knife. So a screwdriver that's a bit blunt and then a little bit of force there and it does seem to come out okay. There we go. So that's that one out. You can see that's the broken T-bar. Then we can just take the uh, new leg with the uh, T-bar already attached and we can push that back in. Again, 
all you'll need is the screwdriver just to open up that section a, a little bit we can pop that in so there you go you can see there's a t-bar in with minimal damage to the top of the legs as i say a little bit of uh, plastic weld on that and those will stick back together quite nicely but you can see those legs are now firmly attached together again P -O -Y -P -O -L -L -O -I. now the t-bars are in place we can just glue the tops of these legs back together and for that i'm using ema plastic weld this stuff works particularly well on certain types of plastic and it just so happens these legs are made of that sort of styrene type plastic so what i'm going to do is squeeze those top legs together get a bit of the plastic weld and let it sort of go in just using capillary action it sucks in quite nicely just hold that for a few minutes and let it set I'll do the same to the other leg and then they'll be nice and firmly attached and uh, not going to come off again so we now have two pairs of repaired legs and they are looking quite good there's minimal damage to the top of them as I say that's the bit I'm still not 100% happy with the front actually doesn't look too bad if you cut from the back you can see the front still looks quite nice and on a figure like this it is all going to get hidden I would worry a bit if I was doing it on the war duke because you would end up with some fairly visible marks but I guess it's still better to have a figure that is all together than one with a broken leg so it's a sort of acceptable I suppose now there are two different ways of attaching these legs i didn't show you the first part of uh, this uh, process basically when i removed the broken leg from uh, this uh, ringle run what i did was rather than cutting the o-ring i inserted a piece of beading wire through the o-ring and unhooked the uh, remains of the leg so i now have a bit of beading wire that is hooked through the original o-ring the original o-ring on this one seems in very good condition it's got no wear to it so i thought we might as well uh, use that and save one process so what i've got to do now is hook this new t-bar onto this old o-ring and to do that i've got myself here this is what's called a dotter it's basically just a little sort of uh, metal pole with a ball on the end of it it's very useful for dotting glue and onto uh, things but actually in this instance it's also very good for putting the legs back on because what i can do if i move his arms out of the way i can pull the o-ring out using the piece of uh, beading wire and i can hook that the old o-ring onto the dotter like so and then we can get that out of the uh, sort of body part of uh, Ringle Run. And now I'm hoping I should be able to remove that piece of beading wire. And with a little bit of uh, sort of wiggling and jiggling, I'm hoping I can hook that O-ring onto the new T-bar somehow. It might be easier to do without the camera in the way, but I'm sure we can do this uh, so you can see in some manner. So what I've got to do is pull the O-ring out a little bit and somehow get that T-bar in. Oh, there we go, look. So that is now hooked onto the old o-ring and if i remove my little dotter there we go his legs are back on and that's still using the original o-ring so that's one method that guy is now all back together and his legs move very nicely now on this one i cut the o-ring so let me show you a different method with that for this second method what you need is a piece of beading wire we have to bend it into a sort of little shepherd's crook type shape so you've got a, about a one centimeter hook there but also with a little bit flicked out to one side that's so that it's easy to guide around the post that is inside the body inside all of these figures about here there's a post that goes right the way through that's what the original o-ring was hooked around and we've got to thread some new elastic around that so i have my piece of wire now i've also bent the end just so i know which way around it's going and what i've got to do is push this into the body and hook it around that post it's fairly sort of complicated to do even without the cameras in the way but with a bit of patience you can do this so i will show you as best i can on camera so i'm going to push this into the body we're going to the left side of the post to start with i can push that down i can just about see what i'm doing twist it around and then if i pull that back i can feel that that is hooked onto the post and i can actually see the bit of wire the other side of the post then i get some tweezers and I've got to go in and grab that wire. This bit, again, is a little bit tricky to do, but if you can grab the end of the wire, and I find just, it will take a few goes to pull this through, but once you've got it starting to move, what you can do is actually grab it and then twist the tweezers around so that the wire hooks on the end of it, and then you can really easily sort of pull it out. Just turn this around, see if I can do it from the other side. As I say, without the camera and bits in the way, this is quite easily possible with them in the way it just takes a little bit more effort but i've already got the wire around there so that's the first bit done so we just try and grab that there we go like that so now 
I have a piece of wire that goes into Ringle Run's body around the post which is about there and comes out the other end. Now we can thread some elastic through and we'll use that to attach the legs. So the elastic I'm going to use is this, which is a one millimeter black elastic. You can use slightly thicker, but I find that the thicker it is, the harder it is to get through the body of Ringle Run. So this one millimeter elastic should be fine. And then what we've got to do is wrap this wire around the elastic just so that it grips enough that we can pull it through the body. So uh, let's give this a bit of a wrap and then see what happens. Okay, hopefully that has enough grip on it. So I'm going to pull the wire now and this should thread the elastic back through the body. Let's make sure the elastic actually goes in the leg hole there. So we pull this. There we go. So we now have a piece of elastic where the wire once was and we can now use that to tie the legs on. Now what we need to do is to tie this elastic and make sure that it hooks onto the new hook of the T-bar. This is a lot easier to do without the camera in the way, so I'm just going to quickly do this off camera, but you'll understand the process. Essentially tie a loop and make sure that the hook is caught and then tie it as tight as you can so that it gets pulled inside the body. So there you go, I've just tied that. It's just easier to do uh, with three pairs of hands. Essentially I hold the body between my knees and then uh, tighten up the elastic, uh, just sort of pulling it as tall as I can. So you can see there the legs are now held on nice and firmly and we've just got two little bits of elastic sticking out the side there. I'm just going to trim those off with a pair of scissors. I'll leave them a little bit long just so that the, the, the knot doesn't come undone and I can then push the excess in just using a pair of tweezers just to make sure that gets sort of tucked inside the body and everything will be hidden and the legs are back on this uh, poor once damaged ringle run. Like so. And there we go, there are the two uh, Ringle Runs with their legs reattached. As you can see, by the time you put the cape on the figure, you wouldn't even know that that one had been fixed up. But if we lift the cape up, you can see there's just a little bit of damage to the back part of the legs. But otherwise, he is a fully displayable and ready to go action figure. This one on the left is a little bit more damaged, but he was always damaged to start with. But even still, he's now quite a, a useful figure. I maybe would be able to do a sort of custom with him in the future. So that's how you do this process on the these smaller figures. Now let me show you how to do it on the bigger figures. So here we have two of the larger figures and as you can see they have the same issue this leg has snapped off. Now the problem with these is that the T-bar is considerably bigger than the sort of GI Joe size bar and as far as I'm aware nobody makes replacement T-bars in this size and I've had this problem with other figures that I've been fixing. If you've seen on my channel a while back I fixed up some of these uh, Transformers Action Masters figures. Now these use that same larger T-bar but these figures are actually quite hard to come by so I don't wouldn't want to use something like like this as a donor for a T-bar. Uh, so uh, I came up with an alternative solution and that is to use these which are piercing bars. Now these come in various sizes with various sort of size balls on the end. They don't have the little hook part but it turns out you don't really need that. So I've got a couple of different bars here. Uh, you can buy different lengths of bar in the middle and different sizes of the ball on the end. And I think this size is probably the uh, one that we're going to use today but it might be I use the smaller balls. The great thing with these is that they all unscrew so you just have to twist these a bit and you can see that bits of them unscrew so I've taken the ball off there we've just got the little bar in the middle so the idea is that you buy them in sort of pieces and you make the size that you want I think this ball uh, may be a little bit too large but we'll see so I can use the combination of those let me get my ruler out and I'll tell you the exact measurements of those so the bar size I'm going to use is this one which looks to be about 12 millimeters which should match that we just measure from uh, the edge to the middle that's about six millimeters so yeah a 12 millimeter bar will fit quite nicely and then the ball size these are I'm going to say they're three millimeters I think that's too big these smaller ones here which look more like the uh, GI Joe size ones are two millimeters so a combination of a 12 millimeter bar 
with the two millimeter balls on it I think will do the job nicely but before we can fit that we've still got to take the old t-bar out now these legs don't split apart as easy as the smaller legs they're actually sort of a lot better glued so I've tried splitting them with a knife and that seems to cause quite a lot of damage so actually what I'm going to do is take these out to my garage and use a fine chisel uh, and sort of give a quick hit with a hammer and the chisel into the top of it and that should split the top part of this leg apart just enough that we can get that ball out uh, you can try doing it with a knife but I found that causes a lot more mess so let me go and do this method with the chisel and uh, then we can uh, take these uh, old t-bars out and we'll put in the new uh, piercing bar Okay, so that's the uh, T-bar removed. It's a little bit more awkward on these large ones. As I say, they just seem to be a little less forgiving. So I've uh, split them open with the chisel and then used the screwdriver just to sort of pull the back of the leg apart. So you can see there's a little bit of damage on the back side of the leg. Not too bad. And I think by the time those are plastic welded together again, you won't see it. And I'm going to be using the larger of these uh, piercing bars. So it's the longer one, which is about 12 mil with these three millimeter balls on the end. I think those will, will sort of work the best. So again, it's the same process is putting in the t-bar I'm just going to sort of pull the back of the leg apart again just with my screwdriver and try and pop these in and we'll be using the elastic to uh, reattach these to the figure not an o-ring Okay, so the legs are now attached together and I've done a bit of plastic welding on the top and they are looking good. Now we can attach these to the body. I've already got this body ready, so it's, I've done this the second way. So basically I put a piece of uh, beading wire up through the body and then threaded some elastic. We can now put this elastic around this uh, new uh, leg bar and we'll tie it in place.
So that's looking good. You can see that those legs are now quite firmly held on. On this one, I notice actually the front of uh, this uh, young male titan, a bit of the uh, pelvis has snapped away. There should be a little bit more sort of going down here. So uh, it looks a little bit odd, but it's still going to do the job really quite nicely. I'll just trim off uh, the ends of these elastics and then I'll push the rest of uh, what's left up inside so that you cannot see it. And uh, yeah, that figure will be good enough for display. There we go. That is one figure ready for action. And here we go. Here are all the figures with their replacement T-bars. And as you can see, they are looking really nice with a very minimal damage to the top of the leg. So I think it's, as I say, a perfectly acceptable way of repairing them. Maybe in future I'll be able to find a better way of doing it. But for now, this does really work quite nicely. I'm also hoping in future that someone starts to make the larger T-bar that would be useful for these larger figures. It is used on things like uh, Visionaries and as I showed you on the Action Master Transformers. So maybe one day someone will do it. If it would also be quite useful to have a smaller T-bar because this character, which is called Perlay or Melf, um, he has a very small T-bar inside and I'm not quite sure what I would do to fix him. Possibly go down the same route as using the uh, piercing bar. There might be an even smaller one that you could use because at the moment that's the one I'm not sure how else you would fix him. All the others use pretty much the same T-bar. So if you've got a Zarak or you've got an Elkhorn, these will use the same ones and it should be uh, straightforward to do it. I've yet to do it on these two, but I believe it will work. So uh, certainly based on all of the evidence that I've uh, sort of got from uh, fixing other ones, it will work on these two as well. So I hope this video has been of interest to you. If you'd like to check out my previous video on fixing Warduke, then I'll put a link to that at the end and also in the description. And if you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.